Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel. Today we are going to see what is the difference between labeling listedness and expectedness in the pharmacovigilance world. Also we will see how to assess and what is the importance of labeling listedness and expectedness. So first we will see what is RSI that is nothing but reference safety information then what is labeling, what is listedness, what is expectedness. So let's move to the next slide. So assessment. So in the pharmacovigilance field, assessment uh, is not only about the listedness, but it involves two, three components, main components, I would say. So first one is assessing the seriousness. So whether the event is serious, adverse drug reaction is a serious or a non-serious. So how to assess serious is already explained in the previous videos. You can refer the other pharmacovigilance videos on the our YouTube channel. Then second part is nothing but the assessing the causality. Okay, so whether it is related with the company suspect drug or it's not related or we are not able to assess it. That is nothing but the assessment of the causality to check the relatedness. And the third important part is checking the uh, listedness, whether it's available in the company information, it's already documented, already known, okay, already observed in the patient who were undergoing the treatment with our drug. So either it's an investigational drug or it's a marketed drug. So it, this we are going to see in this particular thing. So it determines the expeditious nature of the ICSR. So what is the importance of this uh, assessing the labeling? So for example, uh, we know that already we have seen that SAEs are there, serious adverse events. So if it is serious unlisted adverse events, so generally timeline is 15 days. If it is non-serious, then timeline, it will become uh, from expeditedness, it will become a periodic submission. So 90 days submission or uh, uh, generally it depends on the timeline while it's SUSAR serious uh, unlisted and suspected event so those will, and clinical trial adverse event those will be reported in the seven days so timeline uh, is getting uh, assessed based on this so that's why assessment and labeling uh, assessment part is very important okay so let's move to the next slide so if we see here the assessment, uh, the term listed or label, it's used during the assessment of the marketed work. So this is generally the difference between the expectedness. We'll see in the detail. But listedness, labelness is for marketed products, already those who are on the market. Okay. And expectedness is generally used for the developmental drugs, those who are in the clinical trial, new, new molecule. Because uh, listed label, you have to already refer, while for expectedness, you are expecting that these adverse events are may occur with this drug because that drug is completely new in the market okay so we are just expecting that part okay then if we see that uh, before going to the definition of these no listedness and expectedness we'll see what is exactly the rsi so in the at the end of the slide i will also show you the uh, contents of rsi one of the demo of the uh, uspi there you will understand how exactly uh, uh, rsi looks like okay so what is RSI? So for developmental drugs or investigation molecule, the way I just mentioned clinical trial cases. So we are using investigational brochure. Okay. So this is nothing but the, I mean, these are the same kind of document, but this is a very uh, vast document or detailed manner. All the things are ex mentioned. Okay. So uh, like pertaining to the safety of the experience of the molecule under ex investigation. So this is called as IB or investigation brochure. So ref, this is a, one of the reference safety information for assessing whether occurrence of adverse drug reaction associated with investigation medical process is a part of the existing safety knowledge or not. So in this case, we are uh, calling it as expectedness. So if any adverse reaction is already encountered, so in IB, for example, IB is one of the document and it's already mentioned that any XYZ uh, reaction, for example, uh, it can cause anaphylactic reaction. If it is available, then it's called as expected. If it is not available in that and patient experience that adverse event, then it's called as unexpected. So in that also, there is a well-documented term used here. So I will explain that in detail. So there is a difference between documented and well-documented. That we'll see in the in detail. Okay, this terminology will come in uh, all the like listedness, unlisted, uh, labeled, unlabeled. So only documentation is not important. It should be well-documented. So we'll just see that going forward. Then. Uh, 
in continuation of the marketed products so uh, the way we have seen that rsi for the clinical trial or developmental drug that is ib while for marketed medicinal products <clears throat> the generally rsis are patient uh, sorry package information leaflet pil is called as then prescribing information document uh, uspi in us it's called as us prescribing information okay or package insert is also called then company core data sheet ccsi then core data sheet so these are the example of the rsi now we'll see rsi sponsor specific documents okay so uh, i mean there are two types of documents one is i mean all are sponsor specific only <clears throat> but difference between the uh, sponsor specific document is that this document like cds that is core data sheet or uh, core sheet information company's core sheet information these are global safety information documents okay so it means that uh, so listed are the adverse event so these are like ccsi and cds are globally uh, available document so it's updating and these are sponsorly sponsor maintained document okay so what exactly is happening if it is available in that document that and it's well documented okay then it's called as listed okay if it is available in that and patient uh, has that adverse event when it is not available in that document or it's not well documented then it's called as unlisted okay then there are some region specific labeling documents so this is also maintained by uh, sponsor only or marketing authorization holder but these are specific to the regions okay so each regulatory authority they maintains their monographs or their safety information so one is global document i would say while someone is uh, i mean this other one is uh, region specific so some of the example are like summary product characteristics smpc so this is for european medicine agency okay this is for european region you can say so country specific uh, are falling in the european region then united states prescribing information this is for uh, united states of america then jpi is for japan then canadian monographs are for cm so rest of the concept is same label means well documented in those so you must have seen now if it is global document then if it is available in that well documented that is called as listed and unlisted so this is global document if it is region specific <coughs> so generally we may call it as label document okay labeling document so these are labeling smpc uspi jpi if you refer this document and if the reaction is available in that well documented again so that is called as labeled when it's not well documented then that is called as unlabeled so region specific documents have the safety knowledge pertaining to that medicine product which accumulated or originated at that region level okay so it may happen that some adverse uh, drug reactions are not available so sometimes in the pharmacovigilance we have to assess both the document like core data sheet as well as the uh, for example uh, it's a us case then it's uspi you have to refer so it may happen that that drug uh, reaction adverse drug reaction is not available in the core data sheet but it's available in the usp so how it occurs so i'll just give one example i just have search here something so you can see here example of adverse drug reaction specific to the ethnicity or the race so asians were most frequent determined to be the higher risk of anticoagulant related adverse drug reaction okay so for example one drug is taken at the i mean adverse drug reaction sorry anticoagulants taken by the asians they are getting high risk of anticoagulant related adverse reaction while black patients were most frequently determined to be higher risk of diabetic agent related adverse reaction so for example anti diabetic drug taken by asians they are not getting those many adverse reaction but black or hispanic patient they are getting that while whites were most frequently identified as at increased risk of opioid related adverse reaction so opioid when it's taken by asians and the hispanic or black patients they are not getting those adverse drug reaction but white people they are getting <coughs> more <coughs> sorry more <coughs> adverse reaction as compared to the others so that's why in pharmacovigilance world generally uh, we are asking the race as well to the patient to assess the uh, i mean uh, different things okay so this is the difference between the like label and label and the listed and listed and the um, expected so if it is for clinical trial if you are using ib same um, i mean rationally same for all these things like you have to check whether it's well documented or not if you are referring ib 
then if it is available well documented it is expected it is unexpected if not available then if you are referring any uh, global document like cds or ccsi then if it is available well documented then it's listed not then unlisted same if it is region specific document like smpc uspi and if it is uh, well documented then it's labeled if not then unlabeled so these are the terminology these are the difference okay now we have seen a <clears throat> lot of time what is well documented and not well documented so if it is only available like for example we'll see here so based on the document we may have to uh, refer uh, multiple documents like rsi may contain ib ccds or uspi so regional global and the uh, uh, developmental document that is clinical trial investigation brochure so we have to use different terminologies like expected list and label so we have to highlight what is the difference between the well documented for example any adverse event or serious adverse event or any drug reaction if when it is called as well documented so its nature severity and specificity and outcome are consistent with available information in the rsi so it should not match only the name of the adverse reaction but it should be matching the nature severity specificity and outcome so this is the difference between documented and well documented so if it is only available then it is documented like control f search if it is available in the document like for example you are checking your result so so for example if you are checking with only your name so your name is like for example rajesh okay so you may find that in that list of result in your class or in your area uh, or any result which you are check, checking if it is only you are checking the rajesh so there might be multiple rajesh available there but if you are uh, searching with the surname as well okay then if it is matching then okay rajesh plus surname sharma for example and his father name rajesh deepak sharma something okay so if it is matching exactly along with the roll number and so that is called as well documented in short if you, uh, i mean for better explanation so this is called as well documented only partial matching so in adverse drug reaction you have to match nature severity specificity and outcome then it's called as well documented okay so it, if it is consistent your uh, reported adverse reactions nature severity specificity and outcome is matching with the rsi information then it's called as well documented if not if it is new adverse reaction or a new aspect like i mean one of the criteria is not matching that is called as not well documented okay so if uh, reaction is completely new so obviously if it is completely new not at all available then definitely it will be unlisted or unexpected or uh, unlabeled okay so we'll see the i mean uh, examples of this okay so in this case if it is not consistent means what exactly so we'll see like for example a new aspect so change in nature or change in severity okay or um, i mean for example outcome was not known previously for example possible new aspect of the documented adverse reaction so these are ex examples are coming here so you can see in the nature for example so so icsr is comprising the same similar event but different nature okay so for example uh, an icsr state that patient develops squamous squamous, squamous cell carcinoma so it's also cancer only but a medicinal product x like i mean after taking the tra treatment drug x rsi contains skin cancer only okay so this is already known and documented event reaction for x now squamous cell carcinoma is not consistent with the available safety information skin cancer so it's in the nature of this so this is very specific squamous cell carcinoma hence it would be considered as unexpected unlisted or unlabeled as per the type of rsi like if you are referring ib then it will become unlabeled uh, sorry unexpected and then accordingly uh, cds and then regional document okay so you have to check the specificity it's not like very generalized okay this is also cancer this is also skin cancer this is a, this is very specific squamous cell carcinoma then this is based on the nature okay now severity so you must be aware that what is the example of uh, what is the meaning of severity like it's mild moderate and uh, uh, severe so reported a adr is that icsr with severe hypertension so it is clearly mentioned that patient is suffering from severe hypertension and now irci contains mild hypertension so just keep in mind that if it is only available hypertension here as well as here then the, it will become a listed or label or um, expected but when it is clearly mentioned severe hypertension okay and here it's mentioned as mild hypertension so obviously uh, this will not become if vice versa for example icsr mentioned 
uh, hypertension here it's mentioned as severe hypertension then also it will become a listed but here severity is higher in icsr and in rsi it only mentioned mild so severe is uh, i mean uh, it is a more higher term for the hypertension so that should not match here okay so severe hypertension is not consistent with available information mild hypertension is mentioned in the rsi so in terms of the severity it would be considered as new aspect though it is already known so this is called as not well documented it's a documented so in this scenario we will consider it as ex unexpected unlisted or unlabeled as per the type of rsi now we'll come to the specificity so for example reported a or adr is an it is specifically mentioning that right leg edema okay and in rsi it's mentioned at left leg edema so it's not matching because there are lot of things which are very specific uh, with the respect to the side as well no when there is a left side something is happening then or if right side side uh, some issues are happening so if it is only mentioned as leg edema okay here and there as well then this is matching but when right and left so based on the specificity we should not consider it as a labeled or listed or this one so it will be though it is matching leg edema leg edema but right right and left difference is there that's why it will become unexpected unlisted and unlabeled as per the rsi now we'll come to the outcome so outcome plays a key role in the listed assessment it's very important for example so generally it is mentioned in the icsr case that patient died due to pneumonia okay so pneumonia is here with a fatal outcome patient is patient has uh, is no more like i'm due to pneumonia okay so in uh, your rsi when you are checking so it's mentioned as pneumonia okay but in this case fatal pneumonia is very important so if it is not available only pneumonia is mentioned so due to outcome severity you will not be able to consider so just keep in mind if pneumonia caused a hospitalization or something like that no or like i mean medical examination was required so in that scenario it will be listed but when it is fatal outcome so it's very uh, severe kind of thing okay patient died due to that so uh, uh, in pharmacovigilance you, you uh, when you are working or if you have experience you will see that in rsi it will be clearly mentioned that fatal uh, pneumonia may occur or like uh, they will mention like xyz uh, xyz uh, adverse reactions and then they will cause patient may died due to or there are some adverse reactions which caused these adverse reaction caused fatality in some of the patients so that is the case when you will consider it as a listed otherwise it will be unlisted though it is um, i mean available in the rsi okay then some relevant subsection of rsi so you must have understood now uh, whether what is the difference between documented and well documented so these are the nature severity Uh, specificity and outcome based on these uh, you have to consider listed and unlisted you have to use apply your medical judgment then relevant subsections of rsi so in addition to the above point there are some additional points you have to keep in mind like that rsi document is not a very plain kind of document we'll see that like i mean everywhere it's mentioned and so it contains lot of things so it's not like only control f and you find that in the pdf like hypertension is mentioned and hypertension is reported then it is listed so you have to check what are the uh, relevant sections you have to check like for example you have to check the contraindication special warning and precautions for use pregnancy and lactation drug interaction and undesirable effect so generally we will use the adverse drug action or unde undesirable effect section but we have to use other examples also for uh, other sections as well so for example icsr contains an adverse event of hallucination okay so hallucination experienced by a patient under normal dose so in your case if it is not mentioned at all whether patient took overdose or not uh, he has not taken overdose so in this case you will consider that patient is taking normal dose and adverse reaction is a hallucination but in your rsi when you are checking hallucination it is mentioned that under the overdose section so it means that whichever after the overdose section whichever adverse reactions are mentioning those are with respect to overdose if patient is taking overdose then only these adverse reactions will occur so when you are taking in normal dose and uh, hallucination is not mentioned in the normal dose adverse drug reaction sections then this will become unlisted for you so you must now understood this is depend on the sections as well not only like it is available in the document okay 
so change in the frequency expected and listed and so these are like for example the way we have seen mild moderate and all these things so based on repetitive information like i mean lot of patients are now exper experiencing uh, severe hypertension but your label only contains mild hypertension so after some days uh, the uh, aggregate report team they will assess that and accordingly they will update the label so that is the ultimate aim of this pharmacovigilance so based on this information whichever new informations are coming if it is generating some signal and it's causing to the multiple patients and there is some statistical relations based in the based uh, between the like i mean uh, it, it has been identified between the drug and the event then that will be added in the label going forward this, so this is ongoing process you must have seen like i mean uh, some adverse drug reactions are getting coming out of market some days ago uh, you must have seen uh, one of the drug uh, taken for the <clears throat> as an antacid that was causing uh, i mean it was identified that it is it may cause cancer it have nmda impurities so these are the things those are getting developed from the pharmacovigilance okay so that uh, part may get severity and new uh, events may get uh, added so that's why this labeling and unlabel or uh, listedness is very important now i'll just show you one of the demo of the uh, this one uh, rsi okay so you can see here uh, this daily mail is one of the website <clears throat> of us um, government or usfd i would say so here you can find out all the uspis uh, i mean these are freely available so you can see here i just search for the olmesartan okay so uh, when i am checking this so you can see here so this is category of human prescription drug label okay so if you click here here i have clicked so we'll see that part also first we'll see the section so highlights of the prescribing information so you can see initial us approved 2002 name of the drug then see you can see here uh, uh, warning or fetal toxicity so uh, pregnancy is detected it should be stopped as soon as possible directly acting on the renewing angiotensin system so these are the warning okay sometimes in the us there are block, black box warning as well so these are the warning which are important now we'll see indication and uses section so what I was telling, if you are just searching control F and hypertension, okay, for example, <coughs> so hypertension is coming multiple times, even it's coming in the indication section. Also, you have to check if adverse drug reaction is hypertension, that cannot be a listed always. Okay, we have to see that, but these are the uh, just example. <coughs> so indication is given, dosage, then strength, what are the strengths available? Do not co administer with this certain and patient with diabetes okay alliscarin so these are contraindications so avoid in fetal so these are warning and precautions then adverse reactions uh, the most common adverse reaction is in adults is what dizziness okay so this is coming again 6.1 section de detail so another example of uh, overdose like the way i am telling that for example if any adverse reaction is mentioned in the drug interaction section so if you are event uh, which occurred that is due to drug interaction then only you have to check this section if it is something is available in this particular section and uh, in your case drug interaction is not there then definitely you can uh, consider that event as a listed for in general scenario again for overdose also you can see here so limited data is available but you can see here uh, overdose would cause hypotension tachycardia bradycardia so if it is not available in another section that we are going to see advert drug reaction section so if it is available then you can consider if not available then overdose is happening in your case patient has two overdoses then only you will consider these as a listed adverse reaction so generally which section we will see so that is nothing but drug reaction uh, sorry not drug interaction adverse drug reaction section so clinical trial experience you can see here uh, adult hypertension then pediatric hypertension post marketing experience so these are uh, based on the uh, clinical clinical trial uh, data and this is post marketing so you can see here body as a whole asthenia angiotensin then vomiting gastrointestinal related then metabolic and nutritional disorder hyperkalemia then musculoskeletal rhabdomyolysis urogenital system so data from control study so these are generally the adverse direction so if your patient has rhabdomyolysis then it will become listed if it is causing mention in your case like rhabdomyolysis was caused and patient died due to that so it will become unlisted because here not nothing has been mentioned about the fatality understood 
then same thing like for example um, some severe urticaria is there till the uh, no like i mean acute renal failure is there and patient died due to that okay so these are the things which are very specific okay so if you, you cannot consider that those as a listed like based on the specificity and the outcome okay and the nature of the adverse drug reactions and even in the sections so based on the section also you have to look into all these things okay so this is like drug interactions are there lot of things are there in the use of specialization uh, specific population like pregnancy what should be done then uh, lactation and then pediatric use and these are like additional information all these things are available in this okay so i hope you must have understood something from this and this is very important for uh, even new associates uh, or those who are working in the pharmacovigilance world as well okay so this is just label uh, how it looks uh, like printed on the uh, your i mean actual medicine so everything has been mentioned on this so this is very important part so i hope you enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching